As we started this series, we began by creating a Polymer template, which we used to create some templates for different pages. We then created an MVC framework, and we were left with pages which looked very plain and ugly like this. So in this section, we're going to combine both the Polymer framework, which we created earlier, with our MVC framework, which we created in the previous video, to create something which hopefully looks a lot better than this but with the functionality of our MVC framework. So the first thing that we're going to do is to navigate to our templates. As you can see, the templates actually split up relatively well for us already. We have our header section, then we have the actual content on the page, which ends at the paper shadow, and then we have the footer. So what we can do is we can just copy these across into our header, footer and our index page. So this will be our footer. From the paper shadow elements to the, to the div tag is our main index page. And so we'll delete all of the content that's already in there. And finally we have our header. If we navigate to our index page now, we will refresh this page. We can see that everything's back in place for us, exactly how we left this with our actual template. But this time we're using our MVC framework. So, for example, we can navigate to the index folder, which is the same thing, and specifically to the index page. If we change over to the news page, which we created, however, you can see that we don't have any output. If we go into the developer tools, however, and drill down, we can see that we do have the news section, which we created on our news page. You can see, however, that we are encountering a lot of problems. If we go across to the console, we can see that it's trying to load these style sheets, but it's not able to find them. Because we haven't actually specified in our actual header that these links are now going to be static. If we try this page again now, we will see that it has loaded properly. You can also tell from this page that these links are actually not going to work, because this path no longer works. In fact, it never worked, this was just a placeholder. And so we can go through and actually change the links, so that they work across all of our pages. So. Our league table is going to be the index page. The results page is going to be the results index page. The fixtures page will be the fixtures index page. The team selection page will be the team selection. Index page. And the result input page. We could call this a separate page, but instead we're going to put this under results and input. So this will be under the same folder as the actual results. And we will also need to actually link these pages and the anchor as well.
So if we go back to our website now and refresh this page, these links should now give us error messages. They will actually work in the sense that they will take us to the page that we've linked to. But these pages haven't actually been created yet. And so it's just giving us the error message that we created earlier. You can also see that every time we click one of these links, it's actually resetting itself to be league table all of the time. That's because we've set here that selected is always zero, which is the first element. So we can remove that and later on we will come back and review this and make it a lot more dynamic. So this time it will always just reset to none of them being selected. So the next thing that we can do is we can actually create all of these pages. We don't have to just link to an error page. So we've basically got four sections. We have the index section, the results section, fixtures section, and the team selection section. So we already have our index section. So all I'm going to do is copy this. So that we have four instances of it. So this first one we will re rename results. The second one we will rename fixtures. And this last one we will rename team selection. For each of these we obviously need to go in and make sure that it's pointing in the right place. We're not going to have this function pass across information for us. That was just for the, our test. And in our results one, we also have a second page, which is the input page. So we can try these again, but they're not going to work, because we obviously don't have these views created yet. And so the second to final step to creating our new views is to create new folders, which contain index pages for each of these pages. So we have fixtures, we have results. We have team selection and that's all. In our index page we can delete this news page because we're not going to actually use that. And we can copy the index page across to all of the three new folders that we've just created. So for the fixtures template We can just copy across everything up to the end of the paper shadow, which will go into there. And if we go to fixtures now, we will hopefully see all of the fixtures from our template. If we go to our team selection template, we can just copy everything across which will go into our new index page here. And now if we go to team selection, it will show us our templates which we already created. 
we haven't created our actual team page yet. Oh, sorry, our results page yet. We do, however, have our referee input page. And so what we can do is create a separate copy of this. And if we go to the results input page now, we have our new template. Now we did have this team selection page, but we also had the profile page in our templates. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename team selection to just team. And I'm going to rename the index page to selection. Now in order for this to work we also need to rename our controller from team selection to team. Change the class name and we're going to change index to selection as well as amending our link. So at the moment we no longer have an index page within our team folder. If we go back to our header and change this link to team slash selection. And go across here, this will take us to an error page. Because of course we need to change this in the actual link. So this will now redirect us to team slash selection. When we were creating our templates we did create our actual team profile page. And we're going to use that profile page as the index page for the team folder. So to do that within team I'm going to create another index page. And we will copy across the profile information from here. And then in our team section, we're going to create a new method. So this time we can obviously still go to team selection, but if we just omit the selection it will take us to the index page. We can of course create a link directly to the team page as well. So to do that we will go to the header section, which currently contains all of our navigation. Just create a new row. We could of course omit this index and just type team, but just for completeness sake I like to include it. Now when we refresh we will see a new element which will take us directly to our profile page. We didn't actually create a template for results, but it's also worth remembering that all the templates that we have created are currently just placeholders. If we come back across to NetBeans and close all of the windows, you'll be able to actually implement the very final stage which we need to do in order to implement our new views, which is to create the models which we're going to use. Now at the moment, the models that we're using don't have any real functionality in them. And we definitely don't need to create them at the moment. As you saw, the website is working fine without them. But for completeness sake, we're just going to copy this index model across multiple times. So we'll have one for each of the new folders that we've just created. 
So this first one is going to be fixtures. We're then going to have one for the team. And then one for the results. Each of these obviously needs to be renamed in the correct format. At the moment, these aren't going to change the functionality of the website at the moment, because we've obviously not added any methods to them. And they are there more for completeness sake rather than anything else at the moment. But when we come to develop these pages later on, we will be creating unique functionality for each page. In the next video, we're going to actually create the MySQL database, which is going to sit behind this application. And then after that, we're going to go through and create templates unique to each actual page that's going to be on our website. So try not to get too hung up on the fact that each of these is currently not actually functional. We will make them functional over the coming lessons, so make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss out. In here we're going to have a fixture ID, a fixture date, a fixture time. We're going to have the home team's ID and the away team's ID. as well as the referee's ID. So we're going to be linking to multiple tables on this occasion. And you can see that these two, the home team ID and the away team ID, are going to link to our team table, which is how we get the actual two relationships which we displayed on our entity relationship diagram earlier.